Welcome back to the shop. Today, uh, well actually last weekend, we got the blacksmith hood mounted, which was finished uh, kind of over a gap in the videos. I'm off my crutches finally. And today we're going to be doing another kind of crazy project, probably not all today. This is a sheet of galvanized steel. I, I believe it's about 14 gauge, so it's reasonably thick and uh, it is going to be used as a cutting tray. Sometimes uh, I have a, a plasma cutter, well, somewhere over here in the shop, and uh, sometimes you have to cut into a, a pool of water to keep the slag from flying everywhere and it being very hot. So uh, the other part is that this is an old coal forge, but obviously I don't want to burn coal under the house. So uh, it's going to double once it's folded up on the sides as a table using a steel grate and then some steel plate as a welding table, a cutting table with a pan of water, and then also as just a forge table to hold the forge under the forge hood. Uh, also welding and cutting can be done under there too to kind of mitigate you know minor fumes but if fumes ever get really bad I've got a big 36 inch drum fan in the hobbit door of the crawl space to uh, suck a lot of air through and, and kind of clear things out. Uh, and I just make sure I'm always standing uh, upwind of the fume source and it's a strong draft. So I'll show you a quick concept of what will be actually these videos are getting slightly better. <laughs> this is a concept of the forge hood and as you can see it came out Similarly, but the main difference being that the curves with that at the end, the curves were so aggressive that over eight curved sides, it completed more than a more than 90 degrees total. And so what happened was the curve went 90 degrees and then it had to come up to keep the edges together. So in the end, I had to overlap the pieces, cut right up the middle, and I had to have a friend help me TIG weld the edges together because there was a gap. But, you know, live and learn. Uh, so if you're ever making a four-sided curved hood, don't let the curves equal more than 90 degrees. But today, we're going to be doing a cutting shelf. Basically, this flat piece of steel will be cut like this with 22 and a half degree angles. And then I'm going to be scoring the underside of this. This is galvanized metal. Uh, and using a flat bar to act as a brake to then break the sides up and weld the corners together. Now, welding galvanized is dangerous. The zinc will make fumes, which are very bad for you. So, uh, again, the draft component is going to be very important. I don't have a respirator, and even if I did, I'm not shaving. So, instead, I'm going to be holding my breath, <laughs> running one, one bead up, and then going, catching my breath, letting things air out, and then coming back down. Uh, it's such a small amount of welding, it shouldn't be a problem, but even if it is, it probably won't be. Uh, most of my... Get a headache. We'll see what happens, all right? If I die, I die doing what I love. All right, so the first thing to do uh, was to basically position this cutting table with the zinc sheet on it. Uh, in an area where I can cut it and have a very strong draft pulling all fumes away from me. Uh, I'm going to turn the camera here, hopefully, to show where that's approximately at. Back behind that shelf there is an opening uh, which comes through and uh, will pull about 1500 CFMs, probably more actually, through this area. I'm going to orient this just so I can draft the actual cut marks. Each side is going to be bent at three and a half inches. And uh, I'll go ahead and time lapse that. And then we'll start cutting.
Okay, so for that part of it, uh, I wanted to make sure there was a good draft the whole time, obviously. And I used my trusty uh, draft detector, a smoldering piece of paper towel. Basically keep an eye on where the fumes were going. That away. Uh, obviously, this, but the sparks are throwing, uh, you know, bits of burning pieces behind me, so I st basically held my breath, went back into the fresh air intake, and uh, took a couple breaths. So now it's time to clamp up this straight edge, just a piece of C channel, which is going to be a lot more straight than any wood that I have. And uh, take a grinding wheel and just score that line in order to create the hinge point or the bending point of the sheet. So now that I've checked, make sure that that grinding wheel when held up on the uh, on the guard straight against the seat channel is right on the line that I want to score. Uh, so now I'm going to uh, go ahead and do that and hold my breath while doing so because meanwhile we're burning zinc off the top and then I will uh, have to change it four times and do that all the way around. So apparently the scoring I just did was not enough. I'm going to have to go back and uh, just give it a little bit more of a touch. I don't want to bend it so far that when I don't want to score it so far it's that when I finally bend it, it breaks. Obviously, I want to not have to weld the bottom, which is why I'm being so careful about this. Alright, so after many tries of grinding and trying to bend, and grinding and trying to bend, nothing's worked. Uh, I'm probably already more than a third of the way through the metal, and I don't really want to go much further. So, one last ditch attempt at solving a problem. Just in case. Safety first. You know it is bending, but it's so slight that by the time I'm done, I'll have it beaten all to hell. So, I'm going to have to do a little more grinding tomorrow. Well, after a little bit more grinding, I finally got it to bend. Now I just have to do that seven more times. Alright, so far we've got two of the sides, the long sides done, and obviously I'm going to save the short sides for last so that this board can go underneath and support this sheet without having to cut specific sizes for now. And I can do the short sides by hand, I don't need all these crazy uh, straight edges, crazy straight edges. <laughs> anyway, uh,
Actually, that was a little bit too much pressure for my poor C-clamp. I'll bend it back later. <laughs> And the award for Best Actor goes to Mr. Edwin Farr. It's Mrs. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much. I would just like to thank my therapist because I never really had a dad. This is the part where I've got a strong, strong air draft coming through here. And because of the zinc oxide coating on this galvanized metal, I'm going to tap it and step away. Let the air pull all the uh, gas that it's created out and uh, just kind of go at it slow, working my way around, bending each piece as I go, and trying to make sure that it stays relatively level. This will be sat in a kind of a, a supporting foam at the end so it doesn't have to be perfectly level just enough so that I can create a slight indentation in the middle to kind of slope everything down towards a drain in the middle. Now the next stage in the project is to turn this pan into a liquid holding pan that will drain. I've already cut the drain. It's going to go right down through the old uh, coke container of that uh, forge. But the issue now is that the uh, bottom of this is perfectly flat and I don't want to bend it a lot, just a tiny bit. The question is, when I do that, will these edges, will they pringle up on me because I'm bending this down and I'm shrinking the distance between those two sides mostly and on these edges partially. Yeah, I know my camera skills suck. So, I just put this brass fitting, I cut off the bottom, I polished it up, well, I didn't polish it, I scratched it up and, you know, cleaned it, and then ground off just a little bit of the uh, zinc coating on this uh, galvanized metal, and pretty solidly was able to silver solder it in place. And that's going to act as just a hose connection, for when I take that plug out of the hole, the water will drain down the hose straight into a bucket held on the bottom. So we're getting close to being done with this project. Uh, 
pan is cut, formed, the silicone is in it, uh, and that's just the sides where I ground the or welded the um, zinc coating off of the galvanized metal. Now, the next step is to make sure this pan is level, as level as I can get it, because when I'm welding something up, I'd like to be able to take for granted that this is perfectly flat and therefore use, you know, a level finder that's gravity controlled rather than digital or something of that. Um, anyway, so I've got to put this off to the side. I'm going to be using 6 mil plastic to put two liners in this forge top. And then I'm going to be using just expandable foam, which uh, once it's dry does not burn. It burns like hell when it's wet though. And using that between these two sheets to kind of create a form that will level this top out. And that's uh, about how it's going to go. First what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this in position because obviously the floor is not perfectly level. And I'm going to shim down using a planer just a couple pieces of wood so that I can put markers in here. And then once I have it in place I can clamp this down so it's fairly you know secure against those shims but not too tight. And then foam all the way around the sides between this plastic sheet to create that kind of bed for it to sit in so it's perfectly level. Shake vigorously, minimum 60 seconds. And now, we wait. Alright, and here's a summary video for the completion of the cutting tray. Uh, I think the last video I had foamed the bottom of Yeah, you, you like my hair? I spent all morning on it. Actually, I spent all night on it. Get it? <laughs> anyway, okay, cutting tray. Last video. I had used expanding foam, I had leveled it, clamped it in place and used expanding foam in order to uh, go and support the bottom of the edge uh, for all the weight bearing purposes, but hopefully having a level table surface. And it's pretty damn level, it's not perfect, but it's good. If I ever have to weld up something really big, I'll obviously bring down a bigger straight edge of some kind to make sure everything's still on the level. <laughs> And here's what we got. Oh, I'll back up. So the hood from the last project obviously was ducted in. Uh, yes, it is a curved duct. Uh, it's just airflow. It shouldn't be a big deal. Uh, and on the bottom is the tray. As you can see, I kind of took the uh, liberty of putting the grate back on top. So you've got the cutting tray with the 
the bar stock, or bar, you know, sheet, bar sheet. Underneath there is a drain plug. So if I ever want to cut something with the plasma cutter or whatnot, I take, I just tighten that drain plug down and fill it with about one inch of water. One inch. And then start cutting. Go to town. I can put these sheets back over it when I want to use it for welding or other applications. And uh, so, uh, somewhat more importantly, uh, once the cutting is done, I can take that drain plug out. It drains down through that hose in the bottom, which I need to trim short. And this will actually have an organizer on it pretty soon. Uh, that way the bucket will be at the side and able to be emptied whenever it gets full. Obviously, there's uh, this is a welding blanket right here, and it's just there to kind of keep any additional sparks and also to help with the draft. Uh, when it was wide open, the draft would only really take fumes that were drifting up from about a foot away from the table. Otherwise, they just dissipated in general. That's not good. So with this, I'm going to have twice the amount of speed of the draft because I'm blocking half the area that it was pulling a draft from. Uh, I may end up doing a three-way cover, but uh, not yet. First, I gotta actually do some projects and see if there's any shortcoming in the design. Okay, well, thanks for watching again. Uh, that was a lot of fun, and uh, hopefully it's going to be a, a functional product, this project uh, result. Uh, I'm just now getting into these videos and I enjoy making them, but I'll tell you, I'm making videos and editing them uh, is a whole other project in itself, aside from the actual project. It's, uh, it slows things down, but it does make, make them more enjoyable, and I'm not a production-based person when it comes to these hobby items, so uh, that's cool. Uh, my goal is to make these videos both interesting, maybe educational, and, and funny. Uh, I'm really trying to angle for a mixture between maybe Alex Steele and Chris Raygun uh, eventually, which uh, is going to require video editing and stuff like that, that I'm not used to doing. So I appreciate that these videos are long right now. Uh, I will try to uh, get them shorter. And uh, thanks for watching. Please subscribe and like and all that jazz. See you on the next project. Yes.